Having trouble winning games in Madden 24? <laughs> the answer might be something as simple as a coaching adjustment you're not using. So whether you're struggling on offense, that was easy. Can't get any stops on defense. No, God, please, no, 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 no. This is the video for you. So if you want to see what the best coaching adjustments are to win more games in Madden 24, stick around after the intro. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. In today's video, I'm going to go over the best coaching adjustments to use in Madden 24. Whether on offense or defense, these coaching adjustments are proven to give you a huge advantage during gameplay. But I'm not just going to give you my opinion on what coaching adjustment is best. I'm going to actually put these coaching adjustments to the test to see which ones work out and which ones are the most consistent. But before I do, this is a video topic that I try to update every once in a while. So if you guys want me to continue this series, as always, please make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, let's go and get right into the video. Now, I'm not going to spend a ton of time time on offense because to be honest with you all these coaching adjustments through my experience don't really do much or make much of a difference with the exception of one i'll go over these real quick now i'm gonna start off at the top here with deep pass catching and intermediate pass catching these really don't have a lot of value to me i don't really mess with these too much to me it's best to leave it on balance because if you set these too aggressive or conservative it'll always trigger a specific type of catch whether it's a rat catch or an aggressive catch every play requires a different catch so why would i want it to always uh, trigger a conservative or a rack catch. Number one, aggressive catching is not as good as it was last year anyway, but rack catching is only good if there's nobody in the area that can hit you. If you if you throw a ball to a receiver and try to rack catch and there's an immediate defender in the area and they actually you know make contact with the receiver, they're going to drop the ball nine times out of ten anyway because you can basically aggressive catch by hitting wire triangle or rack catch by hitting uh, extra square with an Xbox or PlayStation every single play and it's just going to be better to make that decision during the play. Blocking is basically Basically, there's, it seems like whether you put on conservative or aggressive, the, the cons are way bigger than the, the pro. If you put on aggressive, you're going to hold blocks longer, but you're also going to get holding penalties, and you will get them, like a lot. Like every two, three plays, you're going to get a holding penalty setting you back 10 yards, which makes it really not worth it. And if you said too conservative, the blocks are going to hold up for less time. So it really doesn't make any sense to even touch this, as this probably shouldn't even be a coaching adjustment at all. The last one, though, ball carrier, I do use a lot. I use this every single game. I said to conservative every single time, and it basically turns your fumbling off just about every position running back quarterback receiver quarterback and receiver definitely fumble the ball more often than running back as it's kind of programmed in the game to do it that way i put it on conservative and it significantly reduces fumbles i rarely see fumbles at all but that doesn't mean it's necessarily right so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a test with this i'm going to go ahead i'm going to pick a play here in a minute where i'm going to basically run the ball 10 times with a running back I'll set to conservative and 10 times with running back set to aggressive and see which one fumbles more while also seeing which one has a higher average per carry to see if it's worthwhile. Now I started off on balance and I couldn't help but notice that I couldn't get anything going to either side as I barely gained more than a couple yards every single run coming out to an average of about three yards of carry, but I also didn't fumble. When I switched over to conservative, I thought it'd be worse as they say conservative makes your running back a little less agile and a little slower and stuff like that, but I didn't notice that. I had my best run on the very first run. But after that, I went back to normal as I had the exact same production without any fumbles. When I switched to aggressive, I thought this was my biggest chance to have a fumble, but once again, I had none. But I saw that I had a lot more big carries. Three carries went for 10 yards or more, which was definitely the highest. But it wasn't based off the fact that my running back was going through contact or anything like that. It just seemed like he got to the edge quicker, making this a much better option. On defense, there's a couple here that I'm also going to do some tests on, but I'm going to start at the very top like I did before. I'm going to go over the ones that I don't really think we need to test. Number one, we have auto flip defensive play call. This is something that I typically leave on because I don't want to have to flip the play manually all the time. And if you flip the play, a lot of times the cornerbacks will do crazy stuff like they'll flip the entire field, go from the right side all the way to the left side, and that can get you out of position. After that, we have auto alignment. Now, this one here, there's really no question to me. I like to have this at base, but this can take away some of the strengths of the defenses specifically defenses like cover two man which are very press heavy defenses you can see the cornerbacks are right in the receivers faces and that's very purposeful they're doing that because they want to press and redirect the receivers 
off the line of scrimmage. I'll go ahead and I'll let them do that. Even if they lose the press, they can be that aggressive because there's two safeties over the top. So I'll go ahead and I'll just let this happen so you can see how they press. And, you know, they don't always win. I mean, you can see they, they, there's, a, you know, the crossers get off, and that's, you know, that's, that's part of the aggressive nature of the play. So if I go and I switch that to base, now you're going to see that they're not right down in their face. They're still going to try to press, but they're so far away, it's going to cost them that press battle because there's just nothing's really going to work out, as you can see here. I mean, they actually ran with it pretty good uh from base so that actually was an improvement sometimes pressing and being so aggressive can get you in trouble interestingly enough the cover two man defense looked better when it was set to base and i was trying to make the point of how it would make it look worse to me i was going to suggest base anyway because base really makes every defense you come out and look like a cover four it doesn't really matter it's gonna look the same if i switch the defense to the overload blitz it looks the exact same if i switch it to the cover three sky it looks the exact same so doing this to me is the best way to go anyway based on the fact that it hides your coverages because a good player that can read a defense is just going to look at your shell if, if i go ahead and I, I base the line like a cover three they're going to know it's a cover three right away they're going to see the single high safety there's so many tells when it comes to how to read a defense i already made a full video about how to read a defense too if you guys don't know how to do that i'll leave a link in the description and it'll pop up at the end of the video the next one is ball in the air defense. Now this here, there's four different ones that you can choose from. And I bet if you ask four different Madden players, you'll probably get four different responses. This is probably the most heavily debated coaching adjustment out of all of them. And I'm going to try to get some clarity on that by putting it to the test once again. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to basically choose all four and I'm going to throw the ball to a certain receiver in man coverage 10 times to see which one gets the best coverage or which one forces the most incompletions. Now I started off with balance, which really means it kind of mixes in all of them and that's exactly what i got the most balanced completion percentage i got five out of ten which is exactly half no interceptions it looked like the cornerback was going to break in the ball several times but every single time he didn't make the catch or he didn't make the play after that i went to play ball which is my personal favorite and the one that i typically recommend in my game plays and i figured i would get more interceptions and i did i got my first interception in play ball but I also gave up one more completion than I did in the previous setting with 6 out of 10. But to me, getting a turnover is worth several completions. After that, I went with play receiver, and this was exactly as I thought as well, as the defense played much tighter, much more physical, and also gave up the least amount of completions with 4 out of 10. The last one was swat ball, and I have to be honest, I never used this, so I really didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe it would be one of the better ones, but it actually turned out to be the worst, as it gave up 7 out of 10 completions and also didn't have a single interception or even a single swap mechanic out of the entire time that I did it. So to me, the results are obvious. If you want to get more interceptions, play ball. And if you want to play tighter knockout defense, make sure to play the receiver. Next up, we got cornerback matchups. There's not really anything to go over here. I typically go by overall because typically my fastest or best cornerback is the highest rated. If somebody's constantly burning my receiver, then I'll switch to by speed. If I'm constantly getting moss, which isn't really a thing this year because aggressive catches is toned down and, and high pointing is toned down. If But if it is happening, I can go by height. When it comes to option defense, there's really no reason to not have it on conservative if you ask me uh, if you leave it on balance it's kind of 50 50 sometimes the read defender will go after the running back on the handoff sometimes it'll go after the quarterback to me it's much better to just always go after the quarterback and i think the madden community pretty much agrees but i'll show you guys the difference between these two so we're going to pick aggressive first so the guy with the r above his head that's the read defender if it's on aggressive he's just going to go after the running back every single time and you can see how there's just nothing but run room out here now i got the option defense to conservative which means he's going to basically stand out there and wait for the hand for the quarterback every single time and take away those large runs now doing this makes one less man defender one less defender for the actual handoff the other way, but you can see it, these aren't great run plays to the running back. The next two I'm gonna go over together because they're kind of the same thing, strip ball and tackling. They're both aimed at getting more uh, fumbles, more forced fumbles. To be honest with you, I don't feel like either one of them really do anything as far as fumbles are concerned. Most games I, I play, I rarely see fumbles with the exception of uh, quarterback fumbling which is really due to the fact that I play with the Eagles a lot and Hassan Reddick has strip specialist. When it comes to strip ball, the aggressive version of this to me is not worth it because you're going to get a lot of face mask penalties. So that to me is just out. Uh, conservative though is not bad because you really want to make sure that when your guys get to the ball carrier that they wrap them up and they make the tackle. So having this on conservative is pretty good as far as it lowers break tackle chances, which is something that I'm going to try to use to offset the tackling one that I use because that's going to be the exact opposite. I'm going to go aggressive here. Typically is what I like to do. So once again, if you go with 
uh, aggressive on tackling, you have a higher amount of hit sticks from uh, your AI defenders. So that is probably worthwhile. The, the con is that there's a higher chance of broken tackles and fake outs, which is where my conservative comes into play. So I'm hoping that that balances that out. And last but not least, we have uh, flats. I'm gonna go over zone coverage real quick because I get a lot of people in my comments that uh, have an issue with the fact that I play match. I know, I'm aware that if you set match, your zone coverage to match, that it will cancel out the matching principles when it comes to these flats. But you guys don't realize that you can always play sticks at any point in time throughout the play and it will reset your zone coverage uh, drops. So if you have this guy set to zero, five, whatever, if you play sticks before the play starts, it will revert that to default for that play. So I always have this on match because zone coverage in match is a better version of defense. It's a better matching principle of defense than you get without a set to match, whether it's cover four quarters, cover three seam, that Dime Blitz 2 has a cover two sink. Just to show you guys the difference here, um, what it looks like with, uh, with match on and with match off, this is a good cover two concept here to the Y route. You can see how the cornerback turns and runs with the receiver. I'm gonna choose that exact same play. We're gonna do that again, only this time I'm gonna take the, um, I'm gonna take match off. Exact same setup, I got the tight end and a drag because I'm gonna try to pull that cornerback down. It didn't work last time. Although you can see here, it works perfectly as this guy gets open over the top and probably should have had a touchdown as he gets caught by the ankles. So that's the difference between having zone coverage in match and default. So always put this in match. Now when it comes to flats, I typically set my flats to 15 and five. Sometimes I'll go for, it depends on the route that my opponent is running. Slant routes typically get open at about 15 yards across the field. Crossing routes usually get open about 20 to 25. Five yard routes are gonna be like your typical flat route or your five yard out route. If my opponent is running the ball a lot on me though, I will go to zero. If they're throwing behind the line of scrimmage, I will go to zero. When it comes to hooks, I like to leave this to default because if you put it to something, you'll notice that on the side here, it says that this includes three rec hooks, middle reads, and vertical zones. Three rec hook is one of the better, one of the few yellow zones that will actually follow and play like a matching principle once again. And when it comes to middle reads, this is the deep coverage between the two safeties in cover two. You don't want to shorten that because if a receiver is going back into that area, you want that defender to turn and follow, and he will do that unless you set your hook drops. Leave that alone because even when, if like it also does like vertical hook zones in cover three, those are pretty terrible. They don't really cover the seams properly, so I usually man them anyway. So that's that's the vid. If you guys enjoyed this and you want to see more, I do plan on doing updates every time Madden uh, EA puts out an update to Madden. A lot of times these things can change, and I like to make an updated video version of this every once in a while. So if you guys want to see that, make sure to be a subscriber, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, if you guys want to see more tip videos, I've been putting out quite a few lately. I got some tips videos on how to pass better because I know a lot of people are struggling with that. So I have an offensive video and a defensive video popping up on the screen if you guys want to learn more. Just click the links as I'm sure it'll help with your game. Other than that, thanks for watching, man. My shit out. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.